this is normal. I wouldn't wish this burden on my worst enemy. Everywhere I turn, some doctor is offering me a prescription. Some good Samaritan is offering me a handout. Both numb the pain, but neither heal it. Where did my purpose go? Where did the man that led his peers go? He used to scream at me every morning to go for a run, work hard at the task at hand, and beat the odds. I joined the military because at the time I was homeless, didn't really have anywhere else to go. And after about two years of trying to feed myself, I knew that if I joined the military, I'd at least get three meals a day. My MOS was a 0331 machine gunner and injured in combat, uh, PTSD and tinnitus from uh, L IED, uh, roadside bombs. My job that I had in the military, I was what's called an 0351 anti-armor assault man. Basically, you're infantry and you attach with a line platoon, but you carry um, TNT, blast caps, C4, a couple of rockets. Um, in the case of a, a technical vehicle, a breach that needs to happen, or a door that needs to be punched through. If I could, if I could choose whether to start over and do it different or the same, I'd probably do most of the stuff the same, but change like the little tweaks where it caused an argument or a divorce or my kids. Hurt, hurtful things. When I got home from the military, I had a really hard time adapting into society. You know, because I joined due to the fact of I, I was homeless, all my long adult relationships started in the military. You know, that was my life, and then they were gone right away. So whenever I became a civilian again, I didn't know how to manage adult friendships, I didn't know how to cope with my loss, my grief, my anxiety. Um, so my adult life post Marine Corps was one filled with alcohol, drugs, uh, self-destructive behavior, um, separating myself from, I guess, being a normal productive citizen. Just like waking up feeling motivated. Uh, in the beginning, it kind of took that away from me. I kind of didn't know how to really transition back into regular civilian life. Uh, had gave me issues with drinking and, you know what I mean, depression, and my, it struggled on my marriage and my kids. And I'm just now starting to supersede that and get past that. I would follow the exact same course all the way up until when I got out and, and didn't really get the help that I needed or seek out the relationships that would help me move forward into you know, becoming a contributing member of society. I found out about We Defy Foundation through a fellow Marine by the name of Chris Blow, who trains here at Shibaro and is somewhat involved in the, in the organization. We've been friends for quite some time, and my stress and anxiety was peaking to the point where, you know, I was chasing my fiance down the hall in the middle of the night. You know, I was having these really bad recurring dreams. One night, I put my foot through the wall, messed my foot up pretty bad, I had to go to the emergency room, and then. The very next day, Chris reached out and said, I need to come up here no matter what. I just had to come start training. Yes, I, I did find relief in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu because the one thing that it did for me is I come in here and, and get my ass kicked for multiple hours, and especially here at Shabaro's place. You know, half the people here are vets, and the other ones, some of them are law enforcement, and there's just a uh, an accountability attitude that really made me come in here and give my all. So by the time, I was done here, and on my way home, a lot of the voices and the anxiety were quiet. And I'd go home, take a shower, enjoy my partner, get a full night's rest. It really, it really started to make a difference pretty quickly. I found out about We Defy Foundation by uh, a Marine Corps brother of mine, Ben Krosky. He uh, just moved to Texas. He's been training jiu-jitsu for like 10 plus years. He was telling me, bro, you gotta try it. I found this new gym. They got this We Defy Foundation veterans, you know what I mean? So I just moved out here three weeks ago from Philadelphia, like start my life over, and it's the first place he took me. I found a lot of relief, a lot of stress reliever. Uh, definitely bonding with people, especially other veterans, and it's helped me bond with civilians more too, because I 
I had a tendency of like staring away from them, you know what I mean? I, I would hang out at veteran bars, go to veteran events, stuff like that, so it helps me try to mesh the two together. We Defy Foundation has supported my life for multiple reasons. You know, yes, it helps me um, deal with anxiety and stress, and it gets me outside of myself and my head. It puts things into perspective. And when you get your butt kicked for two or three hours, everything else in life is just so quiet, makes so much more sense. But also, the chance to be a part of an organization that's making a difference in lives and empowering our, our fellow veterans is, is very important to me. Vets, we're not broken machines. We're, we're people just like you are. We just, uh, we joined up, we fought for the country, now we're back trying to move on with our lives. Um, we don't need to be treated with kid gloves. We just want the same opportunities that everyone else wants. There is so much importance to what We Defy is doing on multiple levels. Yes, Jiu-Jitsu is fantastic. Yes, it's great for personal and professional development, and it's great for empowerment. But some of the veterans who need We Defy have personal struggles that some of us will never understand. And for them to be around a group of people who are supportive, but also don't treat them with kid, kid gloves, they treat them like a regular person, it is so empowering for them that I, I think that some of us will struggle to understand how important it is. <laughs> My hero, that's a ridiculous question, no. Um, you know, in, in Ambush Alley, there were people who sacrificed themselves to save lives. You know, the, uh, Manuel Espinosa Garcia, the corporal who is in charge of our mortar section, kept his, his mortar on track and kept it on fire to, to great injury to himself. He's had 23 surgeries since he got out. Um, he's a hero. There are people who, our forward air commander, uh, for our FAC, he stood up under fire and pointed out enemy artillery positions or enemy 83 mortars, lost his life. He's a hero. I'm just some dumb kid. People say we're heroes. I don't consider myself a hero. And the reason I don't is because I, I know plenty of veterans, I've seen plenty of brothers I served with do way more, achieve way more, and with less. So I'm trying to get to that level. So I don't consider myself a hero because they're the level I'm trying to get at. They're my heroes. This is normal. the humility and defeat. I defy the standards that have held me down in the past. We are accountable to our coaches, our families, and to our peers. We are healing. We defy.